What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell for me so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not accept money from my subscribers to invest for them. I do not have an investing program. So please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. If you want up to 12 free stocks, Weeble is going to give you up to 12 free stocks. When you open a new Weeble brokerage account, put at least one penny in that account. They're going to give you up to 12 free stocks. If you're interested in that offer, there is a link down in the description box for Weeble. Click on that link, open up your new Weeble account today, go get that free stock, go get that free money. Well, guys, I want to talk to you about three things today that I think you need to know. And it's going to really affect whether our country goes into a deep recession. The first thing is banks. Two of the world's largest banks, Deutsche Bank and Credit Suisse, are in trouble. Or at least that's what the internet is saying. And when I read through the article, it talked about their solvency or how much cash do they have on hand? What type of debts? do they have? And when you're insolvent, that simply means your debts, right? Your liabilities outweigh your assets. These two banks combined are $3.3 trillion banks. So they're not just your local community bank. No, they are major, major players in our financial picture here in the world. And you better believe they are interconnected with some of our largest banks here in the United States. But one of the reasons why they're saying that Deutsche Bank and Credit Suisse are in trouble is because of these credit default swaps, basically insurance. So when one of these banks make a loan, they can actually take out insurance on that loan. Right. So if that loan defaults, they can get paid from the insurance and those credit default swaps sort of act like insurance for these banks. Right. And all your major banks do credit default swaps. Also, one of the other reasons why Deutsche Bank and Credit Suisse potentially are in trouble is just because of bad investments. Right. Just making bad financial investments or making bad loans to the wrong people. Both of these banks combined, their stock price has tumbled by 90%. So somebody believes this because why would your stock price tumble by 90%? You know, that's a huge decline for a healthy bank. So there is some truth to it. I do not believe either one of these banks will fail because they're just too big to fail, guys. You're talking about $3.3 trillion. That is huge. And again, they're interconnected with some of our largest banks here in the United States. So if they fail, then our banks fail, potentially. Not fail in the point where they're gonna shut down operations, but whatever investment or co-investment they have with Deutsche Bank or Credit Suisse they lose that money, which I'm sure it's big dollars. Also, the other thing I want to mention to you guys when we're talking about these banks, because you know, back in 2008, we had our own share of banks that uh, were set to fail. We know Lehman Brothers from 2008, they failed. They allowed them to fail. They were not too big to fail. But Wachovia Bank, which is now Wells Fargo, was too big to fail. And the government swooped in 
and made a sweetheart deal with Wells Fargo and said, hey, Wells Fargo, you go ahead and take the deposits and we will take all the bad loans. That's what the government stepped in and made a deal with Wells Fargo to purchase in its entirety, minus the bad loans, Wachovia. And that's how Wells Fargo acquired Wachovia was through that 2008 collapse. You got to be careful though and make sure you protect yourself. If you got money in any bank, you better make sure it's insured through FDIC insurance, right? FDIC insurance is basically a government insurance program for deposits up to $250,000 individual, right? If I walked into my local bank as Richard Fain and I wanted to open an account and I wanted to put $500,000 in that account just under Richard Fain, then only $250,000 of that $500,000 guys would be insured. So then I would have to say, well, okay, I put two fifty dollars in this bank. Let me go next door to another bank and I'll put my other two fifty. dollars So I can spread my money around so that all of it's protected but just be careful that you're not using a bank who does not offer FDIC insured insurance. That way you're protected just in case your bank collapses because guys, we're getting ready to run into some hard times here. So let's move on to inflation real quick. So inflation we know is 8.3%, super high. We need it at 2%. But how does that affect the rest of the world who, who uses the US dollar in order to transact business because the US dollar is the world's currency, right? So if I'm in country A over here and I wanna buy something from country B, um, country B wants to be paid in US dollars. They don't wanna be paid in country A's currency. So, so what does that matter? Well, it matters because as inflation continues to be high and our central bank, our Federal Reserve continues to increase interest rates, Guess what that does to the U.S. dollar? It strengthens the U.S. dollar. So anybody or any country that transacts business in the U.S. dollar, how do they do that? They have to take their currency and exchange it for U.S. dollars. So if the U.S. dollar is stronger, guess what? They got to bring more of their currency in order to exchange it for U.S. dollars. That's why inflation in the United States is bad for the rest of the world. Because when we have inflation and our Federal Reserve increases interest rates to bring down inflation, it increases and strengthens the dollar. And again, pretty much every country transacts business in the US dollar. We're the world's currency. So it hurts the rest of the world when the US dollar strengthens because it weakens their currency. So that's why inflation is hurting not only the United States, but it's also hurting the world. So let's go ahead and quickly talk about the August 2022 job report. So I took a look at it and it looks like job openings decreased in the month of August by 1.1 million. Now you guys know I've been telling you one of the things the Federal Reserve said it's gonna have to do is soften the labor market in order to get inflation down. Companies are starting to feel the impact of these increased interest rates because you gotta understand guys, companies love when interest rates are low. Why? Because they can borrow money very, very cheaply. And then they take that money and they hire people. They create new products and services. They expand. Why? Because they can borrow this money to do it so very cheaply. But when interest rates go up to the point where that money is no longer cheap anymore, these companies start pulling back. They don't hire as many people. They don't expand. They don't put money into R&D. They basically just self-preserve and try and keep as much cash as they can to weather this economic storm we're getting ready to go into. So I think the job report is reflective of increased interest rates. Again, that's my opinion. You guys go out and do your own research and, and determine what your thought process is. But it 
you know, I'm an old banker and I know people borrow money. Companies borrow money when it's cheap. When it's not cheap, guys, companies and, and consumers don't borrow money. And that's what the Federal Reserve is trying to get accomplished by raising interest rates. They don't want people and companies borrowing money right now because we already got too much money in the system. It's already overheated. We need to pull back so we can bring inflation down. Those are my uh, things I wanted to talk to you about today, guys. Just giving you a, a good indication of what I see out there. Again, doesn't mean it's going to be uh, happening. I'm just telling you what my opinion is, right? This is a opinion channel, not a convince you channel. So if you want those 12 free stocks, click on that Weeble link down in the description box. Open your new account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing, share the video, smash the like button. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. And I'm going to catch you on the next video. Peace. Today's video is sponsored by my company, RF Financial Consulting. And in my company, I work with individuals just like you through financial mentoring and coaching sessions. And in those one hour sessions, we talk about strategies to help you get to your financial freedom, whether it be through real estate investing, stock market investing, creating additional streams of income, credit card arbitrage, or starting and growing a business. If that's something that you might be interested in, there's an email address in the description box of the video. Send me an email and let's discuss if I'm the right fit for you.